All right, let's try this again. I'm just going to flick over to see if I've got anybody watching at all. So it's quite possible that there is no one. Uh, all right. Let's just see what happens, shall we? I am working out how to uh, get the chat going. Here we go. Enable live chat. Anyway, I'm going to get into it because, well, I've wasted enough of everybody's time at this point. So thanks to uh, anyone who's listening in, joining in. Uh, this is my first ever YouTube live, so it could be really awesome. It could be really crap. Um, I hope that the video quality and the audio quality is all right uh, and it's not too laggy. Unfortunately, I... Um, I can't really monitor it. I I did do a test stream the other day, but and it went a lot smoother than this. But um, anyway, I'll just I'll just keep diving into it. Um, I suppose over this time, I've been um, looking into a lot of my show files and just going through some things. And uh, today, just wanted to show you guys a couple of things that I'm doing. Um, I'm not sure uh, if it'll. I mean, I'm I'm kind of hoping the end result is that you take some of these ideas and try and make them your own. Um, I certainly don't know everything and everything I'm doing definitely isn't perfect. So, uh, yeah, I suppose it's just to generate some conversation about some different mix techniques and see, um, you know, what you guys can sort of come up with based on what I'm doing. And, yeah, hopefully it can spur some ideas on. Uh, the, the tracks I'm using today are by band, a Melbourne band called Kingswood. Um, it was my last ever show before all this stuff broke out and we had to get inside our homes and stay here. Uh, so, yeah, it's... Um, I suppose what I'll do is I might I might play some uh, of, of what you'll hear and then we'll go through and dissect it a little bit and, yeah, let me know what you think. I'm still trying to work out how I can enable the live chat so you can at least let me know if things are happening, but it's kind of not letting me at the moment. So we'll just see what happens. All right, so I'll play some of it and yeah, we'll then sort of go through it and dissect it a little bit. So that's what we got going on. Um, I'll just start from the top. I'll show you uh, what inputs I've got, where everything's kind of going to, so at least uh, we can get that covered. So uh, two kick mics, uh, an in and an out. 
I think got two snare mics, a top and a bottom. Um, the kick mics are in a 91 and a 902 on the outside. Snare top is M80 on top and a Bayer M69 on the bottom. Uh, hats, ATM 450. Uh, and then I got a rack tom and two floors. Um, and I was actually, for this gig, trying out the new Beta 98 uh, from Shure. So, yeah, they're a little... They're, they're pretty good. I like them. Um, and then the overheads I've got here in a stereo channel. Uh, and they were AE3000s. I've then... Usually I've got a clean and a dirty bass line. Um, but for some reason the dirty line didn't record. So I'm just working with the clean today. So sorry, Bredo, if you're watching. Um, I've then got a, a mono... Uh, two mono guitars at the end here. Um, I've then got a stereo keys... And then some tracks lines. So there's instruments, which is stereo, guitar track, which is stereo, percussion, mono, keys track, mono, and BV tracks are mono. Um, and you'll notice I took all the vocals out, not because they're not very good. They're actually really good on this one. Um, but just the things I want to show you today are more focused on the band inputs. So I just sort of took them out so we can really have a listen to some things. Um, so the first thing I wanted to, to look at was, um, and this is not something that's, just on the digicos, but um, I suppose a lot of the a lot of the things I do on here is due to the fact that I wanted to try and keep everything in the console without having to go to an external waves rack or anything like that. So trying to be creative in how I use some of the available tools on these consoles, and um, a lot of these things are transferable to other consoles as well. So um, yeah, I think. Hopefully, it's not too Digico specific, although it's kind of where I've landed. Um, so, I just wanted to chat real quick about the DigiTube. Um, now, every all the channels on the console have the ability to turn on essentially a, a saturator or a tube amp stage. Uh, and to get there, you'd hit the top of the channel. And then you've got controls here, which is a drive control and a bias control. Um, so drive control is essentially how much of this, how much you want to saturate the preamp and then the bias is the type of harmonics that you want to generate. So, um, the lower the bias, the less amount of harmonics. And as you go up, um, you're basically extending the range of the harmonics, uh, and then you, you drive it a bit harder. So, um, the warmth setting is essentially what Digico are calling their default settings. I don't know exactly what they are, but it's... Um, yeah, it's what they're just calling their default kind of saturation or distortion settings. Um, now, things I'm using it on, uh, I do use it on the clean bass channel. Um, I, I am using it uh, on the keys channel as well. Uh, I believe this, there were some other things here. Um, but the, the one I wanted to focus on, so I'm running, I'm running a dry drums and a smash drums uh, in, in two, two stereo groups which are being sent to the master. And the the thing I'm doing with the tube here is on the smash uh, one, I'm actually driving it pretty hard to get a fair amount of that harmonic distortion um, happening. So what I'll do is I'll mute everything else and I'll play the drums. Um, so I'll just play the drums and... I'll play everything together so you can hear the drums as a whole and then I'll just solo out the, the parallel bus um, and then I'll have a chat a little bit about what some of the things I'm doing there. And I'll just go with the parallel bus on its own. And just the dry. And back together. Cool. 
So you can hear on that parallel bus, I'm actually saturating it quite a bit with the DigiTube. Um, so I'll give you an idea of what it sounds like uh, with and without it. So this is with. I'll take it off. And back on. So I really like the edge that it gives it. Um, and then the other thing I'm doing with this parallel bus as well, which I'll just uh, add in here. wasn't going to talk about this, but I will just real quick. So I'm using the second compressor, um, which hopefully you can see it's doing quite a bit. It's getting down to neg 20, so it's smashing it pretty hard. Um, but I'm using this key filter here to essentially put a crossover at about 100 hertz. And I'll solo the smash uh again and I'll show you the difference between having that key in and key out. So this is with the key in and the DigiTube active. And as I wind out that high pass filter, you can hear it's crushing that kick drum. So if I wind that back in, it's letting a lot of that low end come in uncompressed and I prefer the sound of that so we'll put all that back together cool so that's a little bit about what I'm doing with the drums I'm using that digitube um, the bias is on two, so I'm getting one or two uh, harmonics there and driving it pretty hard into that that preamp to really saturate it and give it a whole lot of edge and distortion at the end there. Um, and then I'm also using the DigiTube on the keys. So uh, I might just find a bit where the keys are and I'll show you what that sounds like. So here we go. And I'll turn that off. That's just the keys on its own. I'll just put the warmth setting back on. And again, I really like the presence that that pulls into the keys. Um, I don't think I'm using the tube in anything else. Uh, possibly, yeah, so bass, I'll show you the bass clean as well while we're here. So that's with the tube on. And I'll take the tube off. And back on. So yeah, particularly when he digs in a little harder there, it tends to drive into the tube a bit more, give it a bit more of an edge. And we'll add the drums. Keys. Might as well put the guitars in for now as well. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit about how I'm using the tube emulator. Um, sorry, just trying to make all the technology work. It's actually a good little test run for me. I've put together a little live streaming setup to give me something to do for a little while. So I'm hoping it's all translating. If not, I am recording this. So hopefully I'll be able to upload a better recording if everything's not good. So we shall find out. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit about how I'm using the, the DigiTube. Um, 
And yeah, it just gives, to me, it, it gives some of that harmonic distortion and saturation that we miss a little bit in uh, consoles, particularly the Digico, which the preamps are fairly clean. Uh, and so with everything being so transparent, I just find the, the edge of the DigiTube gives, um, yeah, just separates some things and gives a little bit of uh, interest to some of the, some of the inputs. Um, so yeah, the next thing I wanted to really quickly chat about was, uh, so you'll see I'm using quite a few stereo channels. So my overheads are a stereo channel. Uh, my keys are a stereo channel. And of course they stop. Uh, we got some guitar tracks that are coming in stereo. So one bit of the the preamp up the top that uh, may often get lost is this stereo width control here. Uh, and when I discovered this and started using it a bit more, I found it just completely changed the way that I approached some things. So it gives you the ability on a stereo channel to either go fully mono or fully wide. Uh, and I'll show you why you might want to do this. So let's just have a listen to the keys and I'll go fully mono with them and then I'll go fully wide with them as well and just have a listen to uh, how everything, basically what it does. And of course I picked the bit where there's no keys. Here we go. So that's stereo. Moving things into mono. And just getting wider. And that's real wide. So, hopefully that translated and you could hear the difference through YouTube. Uh, I'm sure they're adding a little bit more compression or whatever on, on the end of it as well. So, now the reason you might want to use this, uh, I'll show you one of my examples. So, my groups here, uh, I've obviously got a bunch of guitars coming in, so have a listen to that. Now the, I suppose the job of the guitar track, so it's a four piece band and there's a lot of guitars on the record and so we don't want any of them to get lost and it's also a, a bit of a support uh, for the main guitarist as well, so it keeps all the parts there with us. Um, the main guitar part sounds like this. And that is, that's just a JDX in the back of an amp, I think for this one. We were going between JDXs and using Milkman's, so I think this is the JDX, um, which obviously has a very uh, clear upfront personality to it. Cool. Um, now the guitar tracks in stereo sound a little bit like this. Now when I picture my stereo image, obviously see left and right, but there's this kind of middle section, uh, which is where for me things like snare drums uh, and lead guitars and things sort of come down the center. And then uh, what this stereo width control thing has done for me is to be able to take guitar tracks like this and essentially just pop them like that so taking a little bit of that mid information out and allowing the the main guitar particularly when he's soloing just to lay straight in the middle there so taking that stereo popping it out a little bit and then allowing the guitar to really crank up the center that's sort of how I picture it in my head so I'm just going to solo up the guitars again and I'll show you the difference between having that stereo channel in stereo and having it slightly widened. I never go full wide because I feel like you lose a little bit of the energy behind it um, and then it allows that mono uh, real guitar to really punch down the center. So let's have a listen to that. So I'll take the guitar backing tracks and I'll put them to stereo and 
then I'll put them back out wide where I had them, which is about, it's about 40%. I'll just poke that mono guitar up in front of it. Pull it back a bit. So yeah, you can see that when everything went stereo, it all just sort of came straight down the middle. Uh, it was all there and it was all clear. Um, but for me, just having the those stereo tracks just a little wider, taking out some of that mid information, allows me to just really poke that guitar up front and center, which is where I want that guitar to be in this case. Uh, and the other place I'm using that uh, is on some of those those keys. So we'll just unmute those keys. Of course, I always do that at the point where they stop playing, which is really great. Here we go. So I'll pull those keys back into stereo. And I'll poke them out wide. And I'll show you in context of the guitars. And I'll put them back in stereo. back out wide so yeah when again when we went stereo everything just kind of came straight down the center was all a bit of a mush you could hear everything but there was no uh, in for my ear anyway there was no separation between um, the, the all the sources so uh, and then the other way I'm using the stereo spread is actually on my left right overheads now i'm using it in the opposite direction on these so i've actually gone slightly more mono now the reason i've done this uh, and i'll just solo it up so you can have a listen so that's my stereo pair of overheads uh equidistant from the snare drum measured all that sort of thing i'll go back stereo with them And I'll go back, it's not all the way mono, but uh, it's negative 29% on this console. So just slightly more mono. And then what I'll do is I'll put that in the context of all the drums and I'm hoping you can hear uh, what I'm trying to do here. So drums. So we'll go back full stereo. And I'm just going to go bring the mono in. So, what I'm trying to do is actually bring the snare drum back into the center of the image. And I feel like bringing those slightly more mono uh, helps with just centering that snare drum image. Now, probably wondering why not use two mono channels uh yes you can do that and just not pan all the way it probably works similar um the reason i'm using stereo channels is mostly for uh console layout so i can get things in a particular layout and so you'll notice that on my first layer i've got drums and bass and the second layer i've got tracks and vocals and it means that my entire patch fits on the two layers so a little bit of laziness on my part maybe but uh, you'll notice I'm also using a multi-channel with the snares, so you can fold that out. Um, so yeah, taking those overheads to mono, or well, not all the way mono, but um, about 20% on this console, just centers the snare drum for me and puts it straight down the middle. Um, now what I've done is I've actually put two snapshots in here, and one of them uh, has all the settings that I've just made with the widening and the monoing and all that sort of thing. And then the other one is just everything at flat stereo. And hopefully this translates, but it's just giving you an idea of the difference between doing some of those things and not doing some of those things. So I'm going to bring the whole band up uh, and I'll start with everything as I would normally have it. Nice and, well, some things nice and wide, some things coming straight down the center and... Uh, then I'll move everything back into stereo so you, the center images of a lot of things come back in um, and you can just listen to the difference between it. Oh, we'll go 
go stereo. And back to wide. So yeah, you can hear, I hear it particularly in the keys where the keys just sort of come from being behind so stacked on top of guitars to just sort of poking out the sides and giving them some extra space. Uh, so yeah, they were kind of the two things that I just wanted to show people uh, that um, some people don't know exist, some people do know exist but have never used them. So it gives you a bit of a practical uh, idea of how these, how these things can be used. Um, and what I really wanted to do was try and get the chat working so that um, yeah, so I can't get the chat working so what we'll probably do is uh, I'll just upload this video uh, I'll upload the recording of it at least and you guys can just write in the comments uh, any questions you have and I'll try and get them into another video. Um, I actually still don't have any idea as to whether or not this video worked. Um, I can't monitor it at the moment, so I'll figure out a way to do that. Um, but yeah, just some just some things that I wanted to show people that maybe they weren't aware of uh, that this console could do. And it just all usually comes out of me not really wanting to run waves or anything and finding some creative ways to make things sound a bit better. So. Yeah, I hope this was of some help to somebody and yeah, write in the comments once this video is uploaded uh, and I'll try and answer some things or if there's anything that I've said that you <laughs> highly disagree with or have a better way of doing, I'm also pretty keen to hear that too because we're going to be stuck inside for a little while and I'd like some things to work on. So yeah, thanks guys. Uh, I'm going to stop the stream now and yeah. Hope